Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. I'm Dennis Gerhardstein with the Ramsey County Attorney's Office, and we're going to get right to it with starting with uh, Ramsey County Attorney John Choi. All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm John Choi, the County Attorney, and I'm really pleased to be here today. And uh, uh, come a little closer, you guys. That's okay. Uh, but as I was walking in the room, uh, and Nori and Bill preceded me. I could just see the, the, the smiles on people's faces, and so that is uh, really a lot about what Nori is all about. It, uh, Nori can bring comfort, I think, to uh, stressful situations and bring smiles to people's faces. So I'm really pleased today to introduce one of our uh, newest employees, and typically we don't have a, a press event uh, to introduce a new employee, but this is a really unique new employee. She's of the four-legged variety, canine. Uh, golden Retriever, and this has been a long journey for us. It's been about more than four years in the planning uh, to bring a facility dog uh, to help uh, our office with the work that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the work uh, that is presented to us oftentimes can be very sad, tragic, uh, and very, very stressful. And oftentimes when we have an adversarial court process, we rely uh, very heavily on witnesses and victims to come forward to tell their story. And so as a part of our due diligence and learning about this type of work that's been happening throughout the country, uh, we've come to realize that adding uh, a, a facility dog like Nori um, could have great benefits uh, to the residents that we serve, the, the victims of crime, the witnesses who we ask to tell their stories in front of a jury. Um, all of that is very, very traumatic and stressful. In fact, I think many times when we ask victims to uh, tell their stories, there's oftentimes uh, added stress and harm that happens. And so I think the use of a facility dog is one that is an innovative practice, and we're really excited in, in Ramsey County uh, to be able to do that. Um, so with me today uh, to tell a little bit about our journey, about where we've been, I've, uh, we have Tammy McConkey here, who is the, our Director of Victim, Witness, and Community Services. Also, we also have Sue uh, Cleaver here today, and she is with the Helping Paws uh, organization. And I wanna um, really uh, say something from the bottom of my heart. I just really want to thank uh, you, Sue, and your organization for your just generosity and openness to wanting to help and realizing that this is very, very important and just putting in all of the time and effort and the resources to help us uh, as an organization get to this day. Um, your contributions and the contributions of Helping Paws uh, will and already has been making a huge difference from, for uh, the people that we serve here at Ramsey County. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And of course we have the star of the show, uh, Nori, who is here with uh, Bill Koobs. And Bill is uh, a victim witness advocate and he is the um, employee in our office who is Nori's handler. And Nori lives with Bill and his family uh, when she is not working. And, and Bill actually has uh, four other dogs, right? Yes, yes. Three other dogs. So a total of four in the home. So obviously dog is, or Bill is a, a lover of dogs, and, and so am I as well. So I'm going to turn it over to, first to uh, Tammy McConkey to talk a little bit about kind of uh, our journey in terms of how we got to where we are today and kind of why we decided to uh, take this really important step uh, to serve our victims and residents here in Ramsey County. So Tammy. Thank you. So hello. Um, well, when our attorneys charge criminal cases, um, if there's a victim, we assign a victim witness advocate to work with the victim and help them um, participate in the process, but also to do whatever we can to um, make the whole process a little bit more bearable. You know, as John has mentioned, it is very adversarial, and that is not always pleasant for other people to watch, um, and it's very public. Um, and to victims and to witnesses sitting on the witness stand can feel like everybody can see me and everybody can hear me. And so um, dogs are turning up everywhere these days. They're in hospitals and schools, and that is because they just bring almost instant calm, and they are comforting to people. They help victims who are trying to tell us what happened to them. 
um, have the confidence to tell us everything that happened to them so we understand the full nine yards of what they've gone through and, and what they're working on to recover. Um, so um, in 2013, 2014, um, we worked a little bit with uh, Minnesota Alliance on Crime, who is a victim advocacy organization. They helped me to draft some of internal protocols that we um, could use. And then I was sent, um, thanks to John's support, um, to the um, Courthouse Dogs Conference um, put on by the Courthouse Dogs Foundation in Seattle. That was in 2014. Um, we've been working to make this happen ever since and um, really through those experiences identified that we wanted to bring a facility dog into our office to work on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, facility dogs are a little bit different than um, therapy dogs or um, service dogs. The service dogs are assigned to work with one person and help them with their disability. A facility dog can have several handlers. So Nori has Bill, um, who is a victim witness advocate in our office. He's worked in our office for about two years. Um, and before that, he had a wonderful career as a Minneapolis police officer. So we're just really lucky to have Bill here, and he's been um, so awesome and so dedicated to making this process happen uh, with Nori. Um, and so um, he has gone through a lot of training with Nori. Nori has gone through a lot of training. We want to stress we're using her right now in our office only. We're hoping to bring her into the courthouse, and in a world where we are finally able to do that, we do need to stress she's not somebody's pet. Um, she has had this training. She is at work. Um, and so her work is sitting with victims and helping them um, be more comfortable in, in, their, in their process with us. Um, we've had her for about a month. Um, Bill is here to answer questions that you might have about how that's gone, but it's gone really well in a nutshell. Um, and then I just want to turn things over now to Sue Cleaver from Helping Paws. As John mentioned, they were incredibly generous and um, have worked with us really closely in um, helping Nori get the training that she needs. And so I'll turn it over to Sue to explain more about that. So Nori was trained and placed by Helping Paws. Helping Paws is a nonprofit. We breed and train golden retrievers and Labrador retrievers to be placed as service dogs. And we're based in Hopkins, so we're right here. Didn't have to travel anywhere to, uh, to obtain a facility dog. We've been placing dogs uh, with people with physical disabilities for over 30 years. So we've been around the block. Uh, several years ago, we began a program to place service dogs with uh, veterans and first responders with PTSD. And then uh, we've also placed several other types of facility dogs in other organizations. Uh, but this is the first courthouse facility dog that we as an organization have placed. Um, helping Paws dogs are trained for about two years before they're placed. And they are trained by volunteer foster home trainers who come to class weekly, turn in their homework, and they're supervised by staff in that process. Um, they're trained to do 60, 70, sometimes 80 cues that we have designed for them that will enable them to work in public. So retrieving items, turning on and off light switches, opening doors, bracing for somebody that has fallen or needs support, helping somebody walk up and down stairs, um, getting help in an emergency, and other tasks that would enable somebody with a physical disability to live more independently. Um, all of the dogs are trained with all of the cues or the tasks um, that we are assigned to them. They're not really assigned a job description until we get to the point where they're getting ready to graduate. So Nori has all of the skills to work for somebody with a physical disability, but because of who Nori is and her wonderful temperament, um, we thought that this would be a really good match for her. Um, the matching process, as you can imagine, is very crucial to the success of the dog. So for example, if we placed a, a, a very relaxed and chill dog like Nori with a young high school student, that could be difficult. Um, so she is, she is ready to be here and, and do her job with, with the level of energy and training that she has. 
Um, once we've figured out that match, then we need to train that new person and that dog. And we always say they kind of go to boot camp because the dog's been working on skills for two years, but the person has a couple of weeks to assimilate all those skills. So Bill, Bill worked very hard, uh, very diligently, was an excellent student uh, in working with Nori. Um, and so they worked together for a while, and then uh, Nori moved into, their, into Bill's home with him. Um, this fall, our, our requirement typically for graduates of our program is that they pass, take and pass a public access certification that is uh, administered by Assistance Dogs International. Um, and then they are required to recertify at the, at when Nori turns five and when Nori turns 10. And this is part of our process of assuring the public that our dogs are trained and certified and that when they see a Helping Paws backpack that they can know that the dog has gone through the rigorous training and certification process. After that point, we're, we're hoping to have another handler join Bill and do some work in the office as well. And so we'll do some individual, individual training with at least one other person on staff here to accomplish um, working with different populations of people. Um, we continue to provide ongoing training and support and troubleshooting for them for the life of their working partnership. So let's talk about right now. So, you know, when a case gets presented to us, then we make the decision about whether to charge a case. And then from there, a number of things need to happen as the case gets closer to a trial. Uh, one of which is that uh, we need to start developing relationship with uh, the victim. And also, we need to have conversations with witnesses. And so oftentimes, uh, just having to come into our office, right, and meet with the prosecutor, sometimes uh, the investigator, again, uh, can just be a very stressful situation. And so uh, having the capacity uh, to offer uh, a facility dog um, to alleviate some of uh, that stress. Uh, and of course, we never, you know, we never force uh, Nori on anyone. This is only if this is something that uh, the victim or the witness wants. And in many instances, uh, they do. And so in that context, we can provide, uh, Nori can provide that support. Um, we've had a number of uh, meetings and uh, things that have already occurred. I think Bill could talk a little bit about, uh, maybe give you some examples. Um, and then, of course, in terms of how we would expand, um, as you know, the, the process happens over in the courthouses, right? Um, another part of it would be to have Nori available to help them, you know, walk over to the courthouse, and then, of course. Uh, there's uh, things that happen around the country where actually um, in the right appropriate situations where the judge deems it appropriate, uh, based upon all of the information that's gathered, a judge could also allow for a facility dog to be there uh, for um, the victim or the witness. Uh, and of course it would not be for the purpose of trying to influence a jury in any particular way. It would be there to provide that support, uh, that needed support for someone who's going through a really really traumatic uh, situation, and too often that is happening every day. So largely will be initially in this facility here? R right. And then potentially expand into right. situations. Right. And I think Bill has some examples, if you wouldn't mind, just sure. to talk a little bit about just some of the work that Nori has already done. I think she, she's had about a dozen uh, meetings already, and so she's, she's busy. She's certainly the breadwinner in that family. <laughs> right. Can you sit? Yeah, Nori's has been amazing. We've had her for about a month now here at the county, and she's probably sat in about uh, 12 meetings with me. And um, just what she has done is just, uh, it's almost hard to explain what she has done to help victims here in the county. Um, I had a six-year-old victim a while, about a week ago, and um, very, very hard event that she went through. And um, 
I asked her mother, you know, would Nori be, would it be okay for Nori to be there with her? And, um, you know, I want to make sure that the parents are okay with that. And I kind of said to her, you know, let's just take it step by step. Her mother was not a huge fan of dogs. And so I kind of said to her, you know, I'll just introduce Nori to you and we'll kind of take it step by step. And, um, and right away when I was in our waiting area there, I met the mother and a smile on her face was amazing. And I said, would you like to pet Nori? And she did right away. And just the calming aspect of Nori is just amazing. And it just showed that, you know, maybe she can have a relationship with other animals and, and things. So that just went well. And I sat with her daughter for about a two hour interview with the prosecutor and her daughter was just amazed. And, 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 and Nori wasn't a distraction at all for this, for this uh, six year old either, which I found very neat. She can kind of just sit here as you saw for, for a long period of time and just kind of be there and, and somebody can reach down and, and pet her or, or uh, you know, and, or, or have her lay and, you know, put her head on the lap or anything. But, you know, it's just amazing to see that. It's like I said, it's hard to explain the, the fact that Nori has. And, and I had one older couple, they went through a pretty major assault here in St. Paul and um, could tell the woman had a lot of anxiety. She kept moving her hands and she mentioned that she had a golden retriever once in her life. And just during the meeting, you can tell she wasn't moving as much. She was just very more, so much more calm and, and willing to talk, you know, and, and she would, you know, reach down and pet Nori. And it was just uh, amazing to leave that meeting to know the effect she had and, and, and every Every one of my victims after these meetings always say, is Nori available for my trial or, or if, if there's any meetings or anything you know, in the future, could she be there with us? And it's just, uh, like I said, and I'll stress constantly, it's just the fact that she has is just amazing and to have this opportunity to be with her and, and, and in this situation is great. John, is there a track record of courts allowing these dogs in? Because I mean, I like Bill a lot more just because he's got this dog with him. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it likely that judges will see that as possibly prejudicial in a lot of cases? Well, let me just follow up on Rob's point, and I'll get to your point a little bit, okay? So uh, one more thing, too, about the benefit of Nori is that uh, it's a great benefit to victims and witnesses of crime, but also, too, it also there's secondary trauma that also happens, and I'm talking about the men and women who work in this office. Oftentimes, we're under lots of stress and having to deal with just the most horrific things that happen. And imagine yourself having just met with somebody for two hours and it's something that was very unpleasant because it was causing so much trauma to that child and then you get kind of all bummed out about all that. And so I think Nori and, and also can play a role in helping us as an organization uh, deal with some of that secondary trauma as well. And then uh, with respect to the question about the, the, the jury process, so there, uh, there have been uh, throughout the country uh, many examples where uh, the court has allowed dogs to be in the courtroom, but typically it's gonna be done with a lot of care and due diligence about kind of how uh, that might work. Uh, and of course that has to be something that would be authorized uh, by the court, but we think that um, there are many, many examples uh, throughout the country uh, where this is happening. In fact, I think in Hennepin County, uh, outside of juvenile court, um, there is uh, some organizations, I believe, who actually uh, bring facility dogs uh, outside of court, so not actually in the courtroom, uh, and they're there to help um, uh, the people that are coming through uh, the juvenile court process, whether it's uh, someone, uh, a child who has been <coughs> accused of a particular crime or whether it's for the purpose of helping a victim or a witness. And so they're there for everybody. So I think there are examples across the country. Um, and there could be issues where there might be litigation, but I think courts have taken a very um, um, careful uh, approach of how you would allow for a facility dog to be there for uh, the benefit of the comfort and protection of a witness or a victim. And of course, we don't want, our intention here is not at all to try to influence the jury or anything like that. That's not why we're doing this. We're doing this because uh, we have proximity and connection to those who have been harmed by crime and those who we ask to tell the jury something about what happened. And oftentimes that comes at very high stakes, high stress. And so I just know, and I've already seen it, and I've heard the stories, how Nori is benefiting uh, those individuals. Tammy, did you want to add anything sure. to that? Yeah. I can, uh, just kind of two things to talk about with respect to your question. First of all, so in the, in the states where dogs do come and testify, a couple things happen. The concerns that defense attorneys usually have are the dog is distracting. 
and to that the dog is, creates a sympathy. So you can eliminate that by having the dog sit at the witness's feet where the jury doesn't really see it. So w before the victim testifies, the jury leaves the room, the dog and the victim come in and sit down on the witness stand, the jury comes back in and testimony begins. And so sometimes then in some states they do give an instruction to the jury so they know the dog is there because, you know, as you can see, Nori's sitting here, but occasionally they'll jingle their, their tags or um, Bill and I were talking earlier this morning and she was having a bad dream and she kind of made a little sound. So they'll make some noise, but they're, no, they're trained to just sit there and there are um, situations that where witnesses have spilled a glass of water and on the dog and the dog just remains calm. That's part of their strength. The other thing to say about that is, um, so it's a little more unusual to use a dog in a trial where a jury is present, but there are a lot of different options in a courtroom that we can use a dog because there's no jury there. So we're hoping to bring her in for sentencing hearings when victims have a right to address the court. If they could do so with a dog there, they'd be more calm. Um, or even just a pretrial hearing, um, you know, having a dog there while the hearing goes on and the victim is there um, kind of brings some comfort too. So there are a lot of options. We will probably try to ease into it, getting permission as we go, um, but, but there are options to happen. Right, so we, through the generosity of Helping Paws, we had really nominal fees, like just a few hundred dollars to obtain Nori. And then the ongoing costs, I think our budget is about $8,000 per year to um, offset all of the various costs of having Nori. Uh, but one of the reasons why it took so long, you know, more than four years to kind of do our due diligence is, uh, really doing the work to make sure that everybody is comfortable with this kind of new practice of having a facility dog in our place of employment. And so we wanted to make sure that we engaged employees. Uh, we also wanted to uh, deal with the labor and human uh, resources types of issues and get everything squared away so we understood that. We had to understand some of the liability issues and uh, indemnification of others. So, for instance, like, you know, one of the things as we're working with the courts, you know, they're asking for indemnification provisions uh, just in case something bad were to occur. And so having just planning and being thoughtful about all of that um, uh, just took a, a long period of time to uh, kind of plan for. And of course, also, too, uh, we had to wait for the right dog, right? Uh, because the Nori was trained for about two years, and then there's a, a match, possibly, and then we had the opportunity to vet some other dogs, and um, we chose Nori. I think everybody just instantly fell in love uh, with her, and so we felt like, uh, in fact, I think it was kind of unanimous, we all wanted Nori, and so uh, we chose Nori, but that was a process, and then, of course, then there's training of a bill, and I see Jean back there, who's also uh, one of the backup handlers. So uh, that process, you know, takes a while too, as well. So. Question in the back. Yeah, uh, I'm Mariel Moses, WCCO, and I was just wondering what has been the difference in the month that you've had Nori so far in victims opening up and or even witnesses opening up versus beforehand when you didn't have a dog. Did they stay quiet a lot, and did you struggle to get people to talk? Right, so at the end of the day, we're just always trying to get to the truth, and of course, if people are more relaxed and comfortable, um, they have that um, feeling that they can do that. And I think Bill talked a little bit about some of, he gave you some examples, but you got any more? Well, you know, I think <laughs> a lot of people, the question I find Come on, come on up here, here. I think, um, I think Nori does help people come to the meetings. I, I, I had one victim that was homeless, and I don't know if she would show up to the meeting if Nori wasn't there. She was so happy to have that opportunity. And when she did leave, you know, she, like I said, she asked again, hey, can Nori be with me? And I think it might make a, a victim like that keep coming back, because they are going through a very difficult time, and they have to kind of go through 
the incident again, and, and that's very tough for people to, to have them do that again. You know, it's some people just want to, you know, maybe leave it alone, and that's out of my mind. And and this uh, this this female was amazing. You know, she uh, she was able to, I think, express herself and even say things that she didn't tell an investigator or or anybody, a, a parent or a family member, and and things like that. So I think uh, she just felt more open and and and, and calm that way. So I think it, for sure, I think that you know, I don't think any statistics or anything has gone on yet on an answer like that, but I. I think it it brings in. I have coworkers come up to me and say, "Oh, they're so excited to come see Nori." And you know, these are difficult things to come to come talk about. And and we do. We we sometimes don't have people show up, and that's that's hard for us to to understand that too. But um, I I really think she's an awesome tool to help with that for sure. Last question. Yep, I'm lucky actually. I only work four days a week, so she's with us from Monday through Thursday, you know. But I, uh, I'm very flexible too. If somebody needed her on a on a different day or something too, but yeah, she comes to work with me at 7:30 in the morning, and we leave at five. So. For sure. Um, well, I have a few questions. What, how does she give her name? Why that name? Um, how old is she? And is she? Um, what do you do about people with allergies? And why? Sounds like this dog in particular stood out, so why, why this dog? Well, Sue might be able to answer a little bit, but I'd like to answer maybe that last question. I just think Nori is an unbelievable, I mean, as you can see her demeanor, right when I saw her, we evaluated about three or four dogs at mm -hmm. Helping Paws, and when I first saw her with her, with her uh, take care with her trainer, I could just see the love that that trainer had for this dog and the time that she put in for mm -hmm. Nori, and I, I, I knew right away that first day I saw Nori that she would be the one, and I just... She, we're lucky. She's just an amazing, quiet dog. I, I just I can't explain, the, but we just knew right away that that was our choice. Finish this question first. Yeah. Yeah. So, at Helping Paws, a number of years ago, we started the policy of naming our litters um, with letters of the alphabet because we couldn't keep track of the paperwork otherwise, and it was purely for our own documentation. So she's from the N litter at Helping Paws. She was named by her volunteer foster home trainer with approval from us. Um, they don't get to just name them, you know, spot. Uh, <laughs> but um, but she, so it had to fall within a certain category. Um, I think she was two in April, maybe March, April, I think. So she's almost two and a half, I guess. Um, there was another question out there. Allergies. Um, typically, um, we would say allergies, you know, equal accommodation. Um, so if there's somebody that um, would have an allergy issue, um, we could um, accommodate them differently. Um, you guys could speak to that too. Tammy, you can speak to that as well. Um, probably address that with the judges. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you want to have staff with allergies. Right. right. <laughs> so our division is up on the third floor and in, you know, part of the delay was we sort of surveyed everybody to ask them, um, do you have allergies? Do you have any other reason why you would be uncomfortable you know, being around a dog? And um, there is one person with allergies and she said, I'm fine as long as I don't touch her. And one of the things that I did um, in preparation too was to talk to different courthouses and prosecutors offices around the country to see their experience. Everybody anticipated a problem with allergies and didn't have it because no one is, forced to have contact with the dog. And as long as they don't touch it, most people are okay. So um, the other thing that they tried to be, you know, have been very mindful of is people who are uneasy about dogs. And when they see somebody like that in a courtroom or in the halls, they just move the dog to the other side of their body. And if they can, if it's practical, have her, have her lay down or sit down as she is. So um, part of her training too is to be very responsive to Bill and very much watching him. And part of how we knew to pick her um, was we were walking in the corridors out in the Skyway and one of the schools let out and a bunch of kids came streaming out of the room and she just, she kept going, she looked at Bill, she kept going. She just was that calm and that attentive. So I think when the dog does that, that gives people who are you know, uneasy with dogs um, confidence that they're, she's gonna be under control and she's not gonna engage in aggressive behavior, so. I do. If I 
had a wish, uh, it would be that uh, uh, a public defender office somewhere in the state of Minnesota could uh, make a connection with an organization like Helping Pause or any other organization. And think about this in the context of um, reducing the harm oftentimes that an adversarial process can have, uh, not only for the victims and witnesses, but also uh, those who are accused of crime. And think about the, the younger ones especially. Um, if there's a way to incorporate that practice, I think that would be wonderful. I know that Helping Paws is like an open organization. They were very open to think of, thinking about us. I'm not trying to put them on the spot, but I'm just saying I think there are resources out there because I think that would be a really uh, good area of practice because at the end of the day, you know, what the criminal justice system is about um, is also about rehabilitation and making sure that we're um, mindful of sometimes the harm that can cause uh, to families. So think about, you know, a child whose um, a parent is accused of a serious crime. Well, there are impacts to that family and to that child. And so if the process in any way could be better for them, uh, I think as a society we should want that too. Other county, I'm not familiar with any uh, like counties that actually have a, like a facility dog for a public agency in the court setting or in the, uh, but I, I am very familiar, or I've been told that in Hennepin County in juvenile court in the morning, there are uh, dogs that are there present and are available for, um, you know, the, the juveniles who might be there because they're accused of a crime or uh, family members and or witnesses and victims is what I understand. And I, I think they do that twice a week or something like that. Yeah. But no other county attorney's office in the state. Not that I'm aware of, no, right. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, some of you have requested. Uh, maybe Stearns County, I don't know. You might have checked, uh, for some reason in the back of my head, maybe Stearns has a, I but I'm not, I, I'm just remembering some conversation, so. Been a request for some B-roll, or you have an idea for that? Um, and if you want to do follow-up, quick questions with some of our folks here, I'm sure they have a little bit of extra time. So you are gonna try this dog in here and not let any of us pet it? <laughs> That's up to Bill. I have no control over that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you guys just um, stick around. Uh, 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 uh